Steve, can I let you take the chair and introduce us to one of the most exciting topics in an area of London that people may often not have been into, because if you talk about Somers Town, the first people, some things that some people sometimes say is, where is Somers Town? And really, it's the area north of Euston Road, oh. between uh, St Pancras Station and Euston Station, up to Camden Town. And it's not an area that many of us would walk into unless you're going to the British Library or St Pancras Station. There's often no other reason for many people to go in there. But in this area, there's some treasures that Steve will tell us about. So over to you, Steve. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, it's uh, St. Patrick's uh, Day, so I I'm toasting it. I'm part Irish, so I'm toasting it myself here at this end. Uh, welcome. Uh, I realise that some of you don't know Somerstown. It's, as Malcolm said, it's wedged between um, King's Cross and Euston and um, Evershot Street at the north and Euston Road at the south. And it's got a very esteemed history um, going back to 1700s principally with Wolfram Craft, um, Godwin, Mary Shelley. And in the 20th century, it was the, the cradle of social housing. And, and in part, we'll be talking about that today. And it, uh, social housing happened, happened in this, sm this small wedge of land. And what was achieved there was uh, considerable. And it could have just ended with um, simply putting, pulling the slums down and putting up sort of housing with electricity and uh, improving the lots of, of the poor people who live there. But it went further than that. There was, uh, there was social um, groups, there was employment groups, there was nurseries, there, were, um, there was outings, there was, um, pubs that were run by, by Basil, Basil Jericho, so, so that it would include families, not just sort of drinking men. Uh, so it was quite an exciting uh, prospect. Uh, but uh, the, the, the architect, Ian Hamilton, was, uh, was um, he designed these flats we're going to look at in a minute. Um, and uh, Gilbert Bays, uh, uh, was the, uh, the sculptor who had a very long, he had a very long career starting, this, that's him himself, that's Gilbert Bays, he had a very long career, and he, he was quite famous in his time, uh, we do know a lot, we do, you think you might not know his work, but you will, you will know his work, because I'll show you some examples in a second, uh, and he, uh, he was, he was earning, he was getting money from war memorials and, and large buildings like Selfridges, and he didn't really have to come to Somerstown to uh, do this kind of, it, everyone knows this, everyone's been to Selfridges, so this is, this proves that you know who Gilbert Bays is, because if you've been to Selfridges, you've seen this marvellous uh, clock above, above the entrance, and there's also other elements inside. This is this this is called the Queen of Time, and she's uh, holding. She's on the prow of a ship, and uh, she's holding um, a sort of liberty. And uh, I, what else is she? Um, uh, right. And an olive branch. And there's the clock behind you, and on top there's a, It's quite a marvelous thing, and it's done in the the Art Deco style. Um, Gilbert Bays was around long enough to encompass about six different styles of uh, sculpture. Um, so he started in the late Victorian era with uh, something called new sculpture. And that would have included um, people like uh, Gilray, who designed the Eros, for example. Uh, that was going away from the neoclassical style of sort of stuff from, you know, the classical period, sort of mimicking that style. And he also did other stuff through his long career. He did um, the art, moved into arts and crafts, art nouveau, art deco, and modernism. So it was quite a long career. He, he was working for about sixty years. And what's exciting about his work is he he didn't he was 
saw himself as a craftsman and he used new materials, uh, ceramics and stones and concretes. He, he didn't just use one material. So if we just, we're just gonna quickly show other things that other people would know. You, you would know this if you've been along the Thames. This was done by Gilbert Bays in 1910. There's about 200 of these along the embankment from Blackfriars up to County Horn and um, the, uh, the, the, um, the, the Pimlic, Pimlico, up to Pimlico. So, there's, so you do already you know who he is, although you thought you didn't. Um, also, he, if you're walking around town, near Shaftesbury Avenue. This is the Savile Theatre. I took this only a week ago and he done a, a beautiful frieze. Uh, obviously we can't go in the bed. Um, and as for examples, uh, um, there's a detail of dancing ladies. So what we're going to do is going to look at Summers Town again. This is um, this is in the middle of Summers Town and this is the Sidmouth Estate. This, Sydney estate, sorry, the Sydney estate. And that's how it looks today for, in Google, Google, Google Earth. And what we're going to do, we're going to drop down into one of the streets, which is Bridgeway Street, formerly Bridgewater Street. So you use one of the taps. This is um, looking from the street. Um, this is um, now, as, as I said, Gilbert Bays, even though he was in, great demand in uh, he took his he he was on the on the board of the St Pancras um, Home Improvement Society and he gave his time as um his time to, to give something back so after the drama of uh, the first world war I mean he got a lot of work doing war memorials because of the awful carnage of the first world war and but he wanted to sort of like improve the lot of ordinary people. So he, what he did was he, um, with the help of Ian Hamilton, who designed the flats, he designed embellishments and, and in Dalton stoneware. And this is a, obviously a washing line. And on it, we see um, in black and white, we see around the perimeter, we see blackbirds. And in the middle, there are four and 20 blackbirds and baked in the pie, and the pie, the pie is in the middle with a Jenny Wren on. So if you can see one, this, this is no, go to the blackbird one. This is one of the original. Um, there was twenty four of these around until they were they were taken down and lost. Uh, going around this 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 line, and in the it, they're rather beautiful as you can see, and they're done in a Dalton stoneware, and they're quite um, solid because uh, he, he used a, um, a saltware to make these. It was a process where these were they became really hard. It, this this process because he was very interested in sort of new techniques. Uh, this was this, the next slide is the central. I'm afraid I've only got black and white of this of the Jenny Wren sitting on the pine. Um, other Children who were going to the nursery, the nursery was upstairs. There's just a, this sign still exists, although the nursery was closed about six, six or seven, about six or seven years ago. And the, like I said, the, the housing association weren't just about like putting people in flats from the slums. They made provision for everyone you know for children to old people and the next slide shows no this this one all right the next slide shows that it, this is in the 1930s the nursery on the top floor in the background you'll see this lovely um there's the children enjoying their food there's a there's this lovely sort of a decoration here and if we can go go back to it now that's a rather nice thing um unfortunately um Origin, who have taken over from uh, St Pancras Housing, uh, converted the nursery into flats. And I was promised by them that they would look after this. But unfortunately, they broke it into pieces, the contractors, and then sort of um, pretended nothing would happen until I made an inquiry about it. 
and we found it was not only this broken because they just tore it off the wall uh, they, they actually they threw it away so this is this is the, there's many tragedies in summers town with um, objects and architecture and this is just highlights one of them They're, unfortunately the sorry story will continue as we go through the, the slide presentation so that is lost that is the only color photograph of this, uh, this image although it appears in film and other photographs if we go along if we move along the, the same road we get to um, another a block of flats uh, this is um, St. Francis. Now, um, St. Francis, for, now, rather than use iconography from the saint for St. Francis, Gilbert Bays, he wanted to bring sort of joy and colour and whimsy to the estate. So, like the, like the one with the form, the rather whimsical kind of sort of blackbirds in the baked in the pie, on this one, we have a Scottish, we have a Scottish uh, po um, ta uh, fairy fairy tale st story, and uh, is and, um, and it was four and twenty tailors chasing a snail. Now, if you look closely, you can see the tailors. There's two styles of tailors made in the, uh, the ceramics. There they are. There's the uh, young and the old, and there was. There's 24 of those, and in the middle there was a, a large snail. Um, and uh, if we go to the, this is not a very common walk for us English people, not a very common um, um, rhyme. So if we go to this, this is in illustrated form. Um, um, fortunately, I've got a, a sound. Someone's done a sound recording of the. Um, we we did this for we do we work with young children as well. So there's twenty four tailors that were all determined to catch them. Imagine that. What's that? You want to hear the poem? Well, here goes. The twenty tailors chasing at a snail. The snail shot out its horns. Like a hummel cow. Ah, cried the foremost tailor. We're stuck now. Five and twenty tailors riding on a snail, says the foremost to the hindmost. We'll all be over the tail. The snail put out her horns like any hummel cow, says the foremost to the hindmost. We'll all be stuck now. Four and twenty tailor lads were fetching for the slug. How, sir, said one of them. Just hold him by the leg. But the beastie from his shell came out and shook his fearsome head. Run, run, my tailor's bold, or we will all be dead. So you see, our little snail managed to get away from 24 tailors. Imagine that. Uh, well, thank you. Um, yeah, we reproduced this for, uh, for a local school. So um, but you must agree that it's a, it seems a rather obscure tale, but uh, it, I mean, it's, you know, but the emit, the, the uh, the lovely uh, ceramics have been lost, and all we've got is empty poles there at, in in Bridge Bridgewater Street. There, there's an aerial view of the um, of the tailors. And, and moving down the same road, okay, uh, around the estate. I won't I won't kind of exactly tell you where these are, but if you if you you can see these from the street side of um, um, and Bayes produced these lunettes, which were based um, on Hans the Grim Tales and Hans Christian Andersen, and um, 
there was there was the little mermaid there was the, the princess and the swine, swine herd there was many um and there's um about a dozen and they're they are each that i think this is sleeping beauty this one you can see her um and that's just a, above there are like, like a second of yeah there there here's one there there so um you can see it from the street and they they've weathered quite well because of the process that gilbert bays discovered with through the dalton the dalton factory So, should we go to um, uh, round the? This is in the next street. Um, um, these are some flats called Saint Anthony. Um, Saint Anthony of Powder, Powder. Um, he um, he was he was respond. He he's a uh, there's some his finials were based well shall we i'm going to talk about him because this uh unfortunately this is uh being damaged quite recently um so you can see the damage here um we're we're trying to have this fixed um, um so i i might talk about this near the end um because this used to look down on the courtyard, but at the moment it's, it's been sort of uh, closed off because of the damage. And we're trying, we're researching how to have this fixed professionally. Uh, in the courtyard itself, which St. Anthony was looking down, uh, in, um, he, he, was, he was, St. Anthony of Powder was, he was uh, um, famed among other things for the sermon. He did a sermon, and his sermon was so interesting that the fish came out the water, the water to listen to him. So he's, um, so these are these rather splendid fish. There's there was in several colours, um, surrounded the finials of the of the uh, for the clotheslines in that on that state. Of course, they're all gone. All we have left is the poles. Um, on the gate here, because um, um, Bayes was also interested in sort of new new uses for concrete, and and the fish theme is incorporated into the concrete um, freeze, which it, which is next to the gate. Um, uh, above the next slide is. Um, a water baby. Uh, this used to be in the. This used to be in the, uh, the on the roof of because the roofs were used as playgrounds of the estate. But this has gone missing some time ago. Um, I believe there was two of these, and um, one was at the estate, and one that Gilbert Bay's had himself. So we don't know where this one has gone to. Um, Uh, we won't skip that one. Um, now, this is uh, another, as you walk around, there's another, um, um, this is a, the, pr the princess and the swine herd. So, um, so you could, even with 80 years old, and the color is still very livid, vivid, vivid. Um, we move to the next one. Yes, yeah, so that's just another view of the same thing. And this is um, another another example. And this this is a like a casting. He uh, he 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 worked in clay and then made. Um, castings so um, this is uh, this is it from his original casting um now moving round the the corner um 
uh, there's yet another courtyard. So how many courtyards have we done now? We saw, we're on our fourth courtyard of, in the Sidmouth estate. Um, in this courtyard was of the flats there are called St Michael. Um, and so Michael is, um, there he is in armour with a, a flaming sword. And what did St Michael do? He, uh, he cast out the devils, didn't he? So he, um, in the next couple of slides, you'll see examples of the finials that were there have, have disappeared. Uh, this time there's no, no, there's not even even posts, but there's this rather thoughtful looking devil um, there. There was two designs. That's just another version with, he's uh, got rather thick lips and uh, horns. So he's a rather resplendent. Um, and there was a, another design, which uh, this one, which um, that must've been, uh, um, that rather looks like a dinosaur, brontosaurus, doesn't it? That one, I think. But there was two types of design. They were in different colors, but it was in um, What you, if you did go and visit the Sid Muff estate, um, I, what I would recommend at the end of this um, this talk is, I, I do walks, so if when all this dreadful kind of a COVID business is in the in the rear mirror, I will be able to do a walk around the estate and show you the the inside. Now, you, if you look at this uh, Google map, you can see the courtyards. Uh, this is, um, you won't be able to go in there at the moment, but there's treasures in, also in there too. So what, what we're going um, to go in, we're going to imagine we're going to go in there now and I'll show you some, some of the things that are inside. Um, this was the, um, <laughs> this old photograph was the opening of, of the flats. Um, um, in the 30s. So um, there was, because uh, Basil Jericho was instrumental in kind of uh, spearheading the, uh, the slum clearances and the building and raising money, uh, he, he, was, um, he was present. And so there was a sort of Christian socialism sort of, uh, sort of um, in, in this initiative. So, um, so that was, uh, and as, as you can see, everyone was getting rained on <laughs> on that particular day. <laughs> so, so God wasn't completely on this side. But uh, mm -hmm. um, so, if we look at the flats today, um, that's looking down towards uh, a block, uh, a block which doesn't have its doesn't have finials of its own, but um, but um, in the middle. Um, that used to be an entrance at the bottom, and in the middle you can see a, a lunette, which is um, I've got a, a closer one, but you can see it in the that's St George's. So they, these flats are called St George's, and obviously there's St George, and he's uh, he's fighting the dragon. So um, if we go to a bit there, that's a close up, so you have a better idea. So it's quite high up, not easy to see. But um, there it is in a sort of um, rather, rather elegant. Um, Bayes was very, I mean, incidentally, he was very fond of um, in his sculpture throughout his long career of um, horses and ships in particular. So th these sort of things sort of appear a time again and again in his work. Um, th this is, it goes about one. Yeah, that is, um, yeah, there, there, there you go. There's, there's some ships on the, the edge of this one. So uh, that's, another, that's another one that you could only see in the courtyard. So if all being well, I will take you there. You know, uh, at the end of this. Now we're going to look at, he did a rather wonderful uh, clock. There it is. There's a, and it's the, it's, this one's called the Four Seasons. And um, um, do I have to spell it out to anyone here? <laughs> but uh, um, so 
I, I don't think I need to spell it out to you, but uh, there is, um, it's, they are rather beautiful and chubby and they're, they're still there today. And um, there's, a, there's a little time clock at the, at the top and uh, a, a, ra a rather beautiful, splendid thing, I must say. Um, now, moving back to the street, um, this is a, a, some flats called St. Nicholas. And, uh, well, no prizes for guessing who St. Nicholas is. You know, he's, he's associated with Christmas. And, um, hello, we've got, there's a cat coming. All right. <laughs> Sorry, the cat nearly barged into them. Um, uh, there it is. That's a central finial. Now, um, this is a copy. Um, the originals have gone, but um, it's still a very nice thing. Um, and so that, that's the central finial. Around, around our ships. Now, um, St. Nicholas, so, sorry, it's St. Nicholas, isn't it? Sorry, St. Nicholas. Is it is St. Nicholas is for Christmas? Did I say St. Christopher? Um, he obviously is the saint of uh, what we think of as Christmas, and he was also the the, um, the saint of sailors. So that's why we have um, the ships appearing in this location. This is um, these are copies, and um, that one you just seen is an original. Which I, I took a photograph of. Um, go go back to um, the um, go back to those. Um, um, in the litany of tragedies, uh, which is this is the third. Uh, a few years ago, um, Origin, which is the new uh, who've taken over St Pancras Housing, they um, because the the. The tenants were um, residents were concerned about security. They want, made the gates a bit higher, or the fence, so they put in new gates. But and they took down two of these, and uh, these, and and they've disappeared. They're, no, not only disappeared, they've been destroyed. So this is the, the destruction keeps on happening. I'm afraid uh, it, it is very, it's a very depressing thing to be a heritage champion in Summers Town, because the buildings, there's listed buildings disappearing at the time because there's a lot of pressure from uh, development from King's Cross, the HS2, the Crosswell, it's all happening here. And it's a very depressing time to be a local of, um, it, uh, um, okay. Uh, we're, we're doing well. Um, uh, inside the flats, this is, um, this is on the stairs going up inside the flats. I don't know if it's by Gilbert Bays, but it's um, it's got also, it's got the ship, it's got the ship motif there. And it's obviously it's been damaged at some point, I've, a long time ago, I think. But um, that's St. Nicholas's um, inside the flats. You, you won't be able to see that normally. Uh, now, moving away from this, that estate, there's a, a block, that were made slightly later um, from the Sidmouth estate. Uh, the Sidmouth estate was named after a street that has disappeared. So there was a street called Sidmouth Street and that disappeared after the Clum clearances. Uh, so that's why it's called the Sidmouth estate. Um, this is a, a block of flats um, um, called the um, St. Martins. And um, St. Martin uh, was a, a, he was a soldier in the 600s, I believe. Um, I'm, I'm doing this without notes. Um, in the 600s, and he came across a beggar and he fought, and he, a naked beggar, and he, um, he fought, and he fought this beggar reminded him of Christ. So he tore his, this was like a, a long ro Roman type robe in half, and he gave it as a, to the beggar to sort of clothe himself, to warm himself. So this is a, a two-sided uh, central finial. Uh, this is what's, it, it, it was taken down, it's been damaged, 
it, um, this is something in my fantasy that we can get repaired, but uh, we would have to sort of, it's, it's gonna be a long journey. So there, there is, um, this is uh, St. Martin, there's the beggar, he's tearing, he's got the sword, he's tearing his, uh, his cloak in half to get a beg, and there it is, there, there it is at the moment, yeah. So um, if we go to the finials that surround, no, go to the finials themselves. These were the finials that surrounded uh, St. Martin in that courtyard. Um, these are not, they're not so much ships as galleons. Uh, I'm not seeing, um, so these, um, these appeared in auction. Um, I've, nev I've never seen a real one. Um, uh, go to the courtyard there. This is what the courtyards look like today. And you can see they're all being truncated like some sort of like some, you know, sort some awful toddlers come along and sort of chop the heads off of uh, some some daffodils, you know, they're all being trunk. So and and all we have like uh, even some of the posts have disappeared. They've just they've just taken down. And, and there was witnesses, witnessed by locals who were living there. So this is this happened in plain view. Uh, and and um, I'm, I'm sure if we went to Selfridges and tore down the Queen of Time, there would be a few sort of there would be a few comments. But somehow it's allowed in Summerstown this kind of behaviour. Um, now we're, we're going to another flat, some other flats now. Um, this is inside a a block of flats which um, um, called um, what's it called? <laughs> Augustine. Augustine. Oh, uh, it's at Augustine's. That's right. It's St. Augustine's. Now, um, uh, now St. Augustine was sent by Pope Gregory in the 400s, 492, to England to convert us heathen English to Christianity. Although Christianity was here for a little bit, so he was sent here as a, a abbot missionary. And this, what we see, what we can see in this in my photograph, is like the, the ship he arrives in Dover at. So um, this is a, you know, Gilbert Bays, like I said, he didn't just carve bronzes, he didn't just carve, make ceramics. He, he carved in wood. Often he had craftsmen to finish the work for him. And he, he experimented in stone and, and, and multiple materials. So he wasn't, um, um, but he gave his time to this, this housing scheme, this social housing scheme, which was quite ahead of its time uh, it, when he didn't need to. He didn't, you know, he could have got really big commissions, and he, but he, he gave a lot of his time, probably at a much reduced rate uh, to do this. And this, this is a hidden gem and you, um, if you can't see this from the street, but if you, if I was to do a walk in the future, I, I'm, I could probably get you to see this. Um, now, moving around uh, to um, St. Mary's, this is a, St. Mary's was built earlier than the, uh, the Sidmouth estate. It's, um, it's going towards King uh, Euston end. Um, um, and he, this is again, he, he used, uh, he was interested in concrete. This is one of the balconies. Um, this is one of his designs. Again, there's fish and <laughs> fish appears a, a, a lot. Um, and move to the next slide. Uh, inside St. Mary's, there's um, another, another set of uh, finials uh, under, there's, a, there's two, there's, there's a sort of quadrangle, a triangle quadrangle uh, of courtyards and within them we have, um, within, we have two blocks of flats, St. Mary's and St. Joseph's, um, continuing the uh, biblical theme here. And the, the central finial, which is the top finial, it has the, uh, has um, 
that is um, Joseph's carpenter's tools. This is a copy, the very thing at the top is. Uh, so there it, there it is, his carpeting, carpeting tools. And um, um, the, 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 the doves that appear beneath them are um, sort of doves of peace. So I think they're associated with St. Anne, which is another small block which is nearby. Um, they are they are copies and they had lost their colour in the Dalton originals had a much um, more vibrancy. It, um, so the these were made in a sort of um, a stone resin. Uh, um, so they don't hold the colour as but they're but they're in the court rod and you can see them. They, they still look splendid. Um, if we um, there, there's a, there's a sort of a long view, and so people still use it for washing, putting their washing up, and um, and it's a. Now, have you seen that one? Oh yeah. If we move to this one, we're moving quite quickly actually. Uh, this is um, this is round the other side, um, which is all, you know, what's that? Was that terrace called? Fun? No, the Edith Neville cottages. There's, uh, they're going to be demolished because, <laughs> uh, because of the the cross well this time. Uh, they were built by St Pancras House, and uh, they were called the Edith, um, and that's um, not not this building, but what what faces them. Around the bottom of this building were some shops. Um, which some of the locals actually, uh, who, who are pensioners now, worked in. Like there's one gentleman called George uh, who used to work in a cobbler's shop. And these tiles you see at the bottom used to be a fish shop. From the, well, they are, they're still there. They're still there. They, they were put in um, when the fish, the, the fish shop was demolished when they removed the slums. And when they came back, they put it, they incorporated some shops, including a fish shop. And these um, these tiles are dotted around that side of the building. So uh, and it just a sort of nice thing to come across on your own. Uh, now we're going to move away. That St. Pancras Housing Association was also involved in other flats um, buildings initiatives, um, both of them in Camden. Uh, but um, there's um, this one um, is um, the Alphone Estate in Kentish Town. Now they also had um, their their own finials, um, and there's nothing to be there's nothing to be seen of them at all. There's no there's no posts. But all I can tell you about their finials. Um, it, the building's still there, the gardens are still there, the posts are gone, and their finials were ducks. I, I can't actually tell you why they were ducks, but but as you, these are these are models from uh, Gilbert Bay's studio. So, but they were rather, I mean, again, rather beautiful, and with this with these these sitting on the top of the finial, this slightly uh, art move. Art Deco kind of wavy kind of feature on each of them, which appears on the other finials. Uh, moving further north to um, to the York Rise Estate. This was um, built uh, along the railway land, in it, um, and um, it was built for for railway workers. So the Midlands and um, York is it the Midlands? Um, Malcolm's going to come in and sort of correct me here because I'm I'm working well about my notes. I'm just sort of a, and these so the the motifs mo motifs that were used here were from flowers and um, uh, and uh, a, like a, a rose. The, these were used on the trains that were going to. There, there's now uh, there's one of them now. These are were all taken down, and and the, the residents do remember when this was done, and these have been sold off on the London auction um, 
market. Now, this is clearly not from um, sold by, by uh, Gilbert Bates from his private collection, because you can see the pole where it's been torn out, out of the, uh, uh, the post at the bottom. So this one sold um, back in 2013 for uh, five and a half thousand. So all these disappeared. If you go to the York Rise estate today, you'll just see like the, the, the toddler who, who, who knocked all the flowers off the plants. He, he's been there too. And uh, they were taken down and they were lost and some of them were sold on alleged, I probably have to say allegedly, but, uh, um, and this is, um, there was also the, the Wyphen, um, these are dragons. They, they were also part of the, uh, the finials. And th this, this is like a small one, which went round these smaller, smaller finials. And there was a, there's, there was a, there was a central larger version of this, but these are all, they're all disappeared. And um, there's not even one in the v &A, as far as I know. Um, and that's what they look like today. And, um, and this is, uh, this is like a couple of years ago and the, and the contractors lorries are just reversing into them and sort of knocking down what's left. So it's, it's a, you know, it's a, a tragedy what's what's been lost of uh, Gilbert Bay's legacy and I mean he he was asking he, he wanted to bring art to the people and and um, although a lot of it is still there a lot of it's been left on the right there you can see Gilbert Bay's working on on his on the, the on the dragon motif um, this is um, one of his garden ornaments uh, right, that's uh, that's some of the that's of the bro that's the uh, that's a, a central one which is um, uh, which was taken down and that was um, that that was a, a central motif uh, for the York Rise. Uh, I've pretty come close to the end of what I want to say about the the um, the. the the St Pancras work. Where are we for time? Yeah, that's a that's a lovely um, lovely example of one that in a nursery. Um, that's called the mermaid. I think I'm going to open it up to questions actually, because I, I I don't really want to. Um, I think I've said I've covered the objects themselves, and um, and they. Um, the, the, um, the lunettes are there, but the finials have all but gone, and even the even the copies of the the copies of the uh, the finials are, are people have been rather cavalier with them, and um, we're campaigning to have them replaced. Although um, the housing association has um, promised, but seems to be backtrack in replacing ones that were, were destroyed by the contractors, but now seem to be backtracking. The, these treasures are in, in a sort of unlikely place for most Londoners, because they're, they're wedged between the two stations. And they were, they were put there by, um, with the cooperation of Ian Hamilton, the architect, and with Gilbert Bay's um, making the, the adornments which he agreed to readily and um, we we're championing the uh, the heritage of Gilbert Bays as, as well as the, the history of Summers Town. Um, we'll put something in the chat about that, that in a minute. I, I think I just might um, uh, open it up to questions. Yeah. Can I just first anticipate some of the questions? Yes, please. Um, now, obviously, everyone's seen these being stolen. I was fortunate enough to know all of these in their heyday in the 60s and 70s. Mm. And throughout the whole of the time since, I have spoken to all the directors or whatever they happen to be called or secretaries of the Housing Association, expressing my concern of it and worry as they got damaged and disappeared. 
um, there were many promises to do things, but more and more disappeared. And I think it was one day someone sort of said to me, your friends aren't very good at taking down uh, the monuments. It wasn't the Housing Association taking them down. People have moved in with lorries and just removed them. Now, the trouble is Gilbert Bays did sell some items at uh, garden centers and south, but I suspect nothing like the ones that he prepared for the Housing Association. My real tragedy once was going to see an exhibition of his works for sale in um, a gallery off Oxford Street. And I phoned the then uh, director of the Housing Association and said, well, I've just been to what I can only say is please five, where there are dozens of these memorials with the, but without the word stolen from St Pancras Housing Association. The trouble is, it's difficult to prove it. A photograph wasn't enough and they were not prepared to proceed with it and they never caught anyone taking anything. So yes, if you can imagine that each of them 24 around a central pole, it, 20 years ago they were selling for around 600 each for the ones on top of the, the small ones, and the ones in the center were selling for about 2,000. Those figures now have gone up by five times as much. It's an amazing thing. Um, but still, the ones that survive are not being looked after. It's sad. If you go to the British Library, you can see uh, some loan there by the Housing Association. If you go down to the basement where the cloakrooms are, there's some in glass cases there but uh, I'm afraid too many others have been stolen or, or damaged. But anyway, uh, have you got any, any questions? If you'd like to unmute to ask uh, um, um, Steve. I've got a question, if I may. Um, and I did put that information in the chat about the British Library because yeah. those have been there for a long time. Some of them are from York Rise, which I know well because I'm, I live locally, I'm on the... <laughs> Dartmouth Park CEAC and so on. So we have long championed those uh, finials um, and it is very disappointing. I think this information should be spread far and wide that um, in the current climate, uh, many of our housing associations do not function as well as they might. Um, I deal with them on behalf of York Rise mm. and I think we all need to put our housing associations and the, the Grand Fromage who run them on notice that they must try harder. York Rise is being sort of um, very much sort of left behind and not properly looked after. But my question really, if I may, is um, what elements of these, or indeed what of the whole of Summers Town is at all listed? Because it seems to me that mm. that is what needs to happen. We need to list these extraordinary buildings um, so that Camden Council don't come along and replace them with high rise um, nonsense or indeed um, uh, uh, or indeed origin allow them to get um, uh, run down. Thank you. Um, can I, Diana's here with me and uh, so I'll let her kind of half, uh, uh, half answer that. Yeah, I mean, um, Summer sounds beset, like I said, by um, King's Cross developers and um, and um, the, the large. I mean, we've got the Crick now, the towers, and we're gonna, very soon we're going to have a, a twenty-eight story luxury flats built on a public park. Um, if you go down the Brill Place, and. Uh, other buildings that were listed have been torn down for, for development, and then, and then on, then then there's this. So the heritage of the area of uh, the social housing and the the history of the the, the Protestant the, the the Protestants the um, the French coming from France after the Revolution here. All those stories of kind of brushed aside for this kind of this uh, jamboree of sort of development. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very worrying time. Uh, we, we're, we're try we are a, a heritage history group and we're trying to address this. 
but the forces against us are, are large. So I'll, I'll just, um, just mm. say what I, sorry if I keep coming in and out, we've got a uh, background. Perhaps, perhaps Diana, uh, if, if Diana is the sort of organiser of the Summerstown History Group and she, she and the group are working towards trying to preserve a lot of Summerstown heritage with uh, mm -hmm. uh, Summerstown Museum there. Perhaps Diana, if you would like to say a little bit about it. Thank you, Malcolm. Um, sorry, I keep coming in and out in a rather ghostly way. It's because we've got the background, which we thought was appropriate of the estate. Uh, yeah, I'm Diana Foster, and I started the Summerstown History Club exactly for the reasons that um, Steve has mentioned, because I actually feel incensed by the amount of devastation and demolition that has happened in this area. Um, you know, it is a working class area, predominantly social housing, but as you've heard from Steve, it's a fantastic story. It's really heartwarming. It's great what these people achieved. And we need to keep this. We need to preserve it. And in answer to the lady who asked, can we list it? I did try to get that off the ground a couple of years ago. And we had a workshop, so I'd be very happy to do so. I don't know is the answer whether they're able to list it. The, it is complicated in the sense that the estates have been changed. The um, the vineyards that exist are replicas for obvious reasons because they will be stolen if they were the originals. I feel absolutely incensed and angry that working class art has gone, that was made with the intention of adding joy to ordinary lives. After all, the saying that Gilbert Bay says was art in everyday life. And we're trying as a group, and I've put my email in the chat if anyone wants to help, I don't know about the situation with listing because the houses and the estates have been changed. The other thing about listing is you do need to go past the tenants association. I have spoken to local people who are literally, some of them livid. Can I say that again? <laughs> livid about these things going missing. They grew up with seeing them. They saw a man turn up with a truck. They were told by this so-called man that this was being taken in for repairs or cleaning they never came back i mean this is just shocking and if anybody wants to help us my answer to this is to get a people's museum and to have the remaining broken ones that you've seen in steve's slides today and i'm really thankful to steve for his you know terrier-like determination to kind of follow up the ones that he saw walking around the estates broken we had a meeting with the head of origin last week and we were told there was no money to repair them. I am fundraising. We want these things back, whether they're replicas or not. I think the area deserves this. There's so much demolition and so on happening. So what I would say is I am fundraising for a people's museum where we can have the story of Gilbert Bays, the story of the Housing Association and other stories. Um, I will put a link in to, to our website on the chat and um, hopefully we can we can kind of get these finials back. Some of them do exist, and Steve has very kindly offered to do a walk when we're out of lockdown as a fundraiser, and nice. I'm, I'm really grateful. Um, with small groups, I think it may have to be six initially, <laughs> but, um, you know, I can't tell you how some people, local people, are actually really angry, older people, but it seems no one listens to older people these days. I think, can and, I interrupt yeah. and say yeah. you need to go direct to um, council leader Georgia Gould, ask her to come and visit, show her some of these, introduce her to some of the older residents and get her directly yeah. involved. That's my advice. I agree. I agree. And can I, think can I also okay. ask if anybody's tried to challenge um, <clears throat> these things coming up at auction because actually they would need to produce a proper bill of sale. If, and I suspect a lot of these people could not if they've just been stolen off the top. I, mean, I yeah, think need the to difficulty the with the Housing Association is that <laughs> their method of proof that they're theirs is you've got to have proof of that. And the photographs that exist when in fact the even the Gilbert Baines uh, estate says that some items were sold at garden centres and things with no evidence clearly of exactly what was sold there. It's, yeah. It is difficult. And I think people have just shied away from it because they felt a prosecution would fail. 
having said that, the film you saw was made by um, a person called Tom Tremaine as a student project 10 years yeah. ago. And clearly Wayne Hemingway was very taken with the finials. Tom Tremaine did try and investigate this issue and it was covered by the Camden New Journal, which if you Google, you can see I turn up in the Camden New Journal. But I think in 2012, there was some investigation made. I think what I heard was that it was difficult to prove without an exact date for the theft. And also um, Gilbert Bayes himself did make copies. But I think as you can see, Steve has shown images from various reputable auction houses, how they got there, we don't know, which were selling them with the pole attached. Now, it seems to me that if the pole is attached, that could only come from an actual washing post, um, which, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, <laughs> is my answer. But, um, yeah. yeah. Georgina. Anyone else? I, I wondered if Gilbert Bays was uh, connected with any other part of the Britain, you know, whether there was a, a similar um, building thing somewhere else. And I've also got a question about the painting, by the way. But um, I'm just wondering if it's possible to look around and see where else his work is and whether there's a liaison that you could be made there. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure I had a, um, a, a book illustrated by him when I was a kid, which of course now is lost as well. But that's my fault. Um, but, you know, he must have done other work and it must be possible to kind of spread out a bit and maybe, you know, collect all the information and then, you know, kind of build his reputation a bit in terms of. Well, he does out. have a reputation. It's just, I mean, uh, today, I mean, his career is very long and he was, he did bronze. Like I said, he went through about five different styles from the 1890s up to 1950. Um, and um, uh, um, everything from small things like medals right up to very large monuments, including that Dalton, the, the Dalton stone, stoneware. That, that's done, um, that is absolutely massive. And when they demolished that building, um, that was on the, along the Thames at the Dalton factory, um, it was saved um, by, um, and now it, if you go to the V and A on the, one of the central staircases, you can see that. It's the history of pottery making throughout the ages. It's a, um, for those who want to see more of uh, Gilbert Bay's work, Apart from, like Malcolm said, the basement of um, the British Library, if you go to room 111 of the V&A and also the staircase, you can see this now. Uh, for Georgina, you live down in sort of, um, um, you can go to Aldenborough. If you go into the church, there's a war memorial by him, quite yeah. near you. Um, but Is it possible? he did work, uh, uh, the, the, he never, uh, the, the, the three, well, the four estates I was talking about were in London and Camden. So he didn't really do, he did work on other, uh, St Pancras did work, he didn't do other social housing projects. He did other buildings like the Savile Theatre and Shaftesbury Avenue, the Dalton Factory, the Fireman's Headquarters, on the Thames. These are these are all things you we can still see. Also, um, if you go to Lord's Cricket Ground on the corner, on the on there's a, a frieze by him of, of sports men and women, which is rather lovely, a lovely relief. So uh, um what is your and you was something about the colour? You was yeah no just before I ask that question, I mean that's quite a lot of big institutions, isn't it? Really, the yes. theatres and uh, Lord's Cricket Ground and various mm. other people that have therefore got his work and might help in kind of pushing the need to preserve it in a more contained and um, connective sort of way. Uh, and and the question about the painting is, what sort of paint was it? How come it survived so long? No, no, you, <laughs> the, you're misunderstanding. He used a glaze. Um, he, uh, it, it was no direct paint. It was a it, he. It was a um, Dalton um, saltware, 
it was a special they use they you it was in the it was in the firing that they got the colors so the i mean it's an alchemy really of you, you throw the salt into the you throw the salt into the kiln that's right that's right yes you yes you throw throw the salt into the kiln to get the effect and um, it goes back the technique goes back to the 17th century mm. and uh gilbert uh he he was very interested in all forms of craftsmanship and he he didn't see himself as a high and mighty sort of sculptor he was more you know he got he was uh, he was always looking for new techniques and combining materials in sculptures so um um that that kind of makes his work more interesting especially going into the 20s and the 1930s Anyone else? Can you work with the Dalton, um, the Dalton Museum or the Dalton Record to see if you can um, uh, sort of cross-reference with them in in terms of anything that's been that you think has been lost, but they might have records that could um, be copied. Um, I'm I, I, I'm I'm not aware that the Dalton Museum has bought his work. It, it might be true, but. Um, what little that's not what's not in private hands will be in the V&A or there's a, a, collect, a small collection of minerals in the, the British Library in the basement and, and then there's the and then we and then the House and Association has some broken ones you know um, so that's that, that, that's as far as I know who that's where they, I mean, I'm not aware of them being in other museums like Manchester or Liverpool or, or but I, I suppose it might be worth looking into whether Dalton's has got anything uh, themselves. But, um, can I also suggest that you <laughs> consider your wonderful museum um, starting up on something like change.org, um, uh, uh, one of those, you know, um, what do I call it? You know, when people sign up and say, we want, um, we think that this is so important that um, origin housing should restore, replace, look mm. after, list, whatever it is, these, you know, the wonderful items and the whole place, because people will get interested if you provide uh, whatever it is, Wayne Hemingway or whoever, and you could get people to sign sign a petition uh, and that would give well, you... Who, who's this? I wonder who the petition's going to be going to, and um, it would go to origin, origin or to the and Camden. To Ca but Camden doesn't own the flats. No, so it would go to Origin but, Housing, yeah, but, um, but Camden would also be responsible because they, you know, it is the council who have a duty um, for for the whole area. Yes, and they seem to knock down every locally listed building yeah. that we've got at the moment. Yeah. Sorry to sound so cynical, but um, it doesn't seem to me that they, they are. But you're right, I will address myself to them. We, we are, as I say, working with Origin, or we thought we were, to um, replace the recent damaged items, which were the St Anthony of Padua, which um, so Steve, because he walks around such a lot, noticed and drew to our attention as did Father Pascal of the St. Mary's Church, who was quite shocked that that was broken, probably just kids or something. Um, but the other finials Steve noticed um, were the two ships that um, we would like replaced. Longer term, I actually feel we want replicas of all of them back. Yes. It's important. It's working class heritage. Why can't the working classes have culture as well? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. But, you yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> it was his intention, it was Gilbert Bay's intention to bring joy to ordinary life. Yes, here, yeah, here. Yeah. And that's what we should be doing. And I want to bring that back. So that's part of the campaign and part of the reason for having a people's museum right here in the middle of the social housing area, which I don't seem to be getting much support from the council for, if I'm honest, um, is because of that. It's because working class people deserve culture as well. And the broken pieces that um, my colleague Steve has shown you in the slideshow bring us to tears. They're sitting yeah. in a basement, for God's sake. 
Why can't we have them on display? Why are they in the British Library? Sorry, this is absolutely outrageous. Um, I think it's very straightforward. You go to Waitrose, Google, um, and all the other large companies who are occupying slices of the Argent Quarter or whatever it was, and you ask for their support. Waitrose should certainly be giving you support for your museum through its communities, yeah. whatever. So um, I'm sure people like me who've been enjoying the talk, thank you very much. And I really look forward to walking around with you, please, because also because of the connection with York Rise, I would really, really like to support what you're doing. So um, if there's any way of, of sharing a, a, an email or a contact or something, something through Camden History Society, I would be very, very happy to give yeah. you support and spread the word. Thank you. I have I have put in the chat the um, the website, and I will just flash that up on screen if I may, um, very quickly. Um, this is our page. We have got a letter from Sir Keir Starmer. Um, there's a donation page. There's a website. We've also got a page for Save Our Art, which you will see in a minute, uh, with all the items that you've seen tonight on the website. Um, and we've got a little book, Fantastic Tales of St Pancras. We're also doing an event coming up on the 31st of March, which is a different event, but it is to raise funds for the People's Museum about Irene Barclay, which we successfully campaigned to get a blue plaque. She was part of the same housing association, the same group that Gilbert Bays was in to build houses in a working class area for slum clearance. Irene Barclay deserves a blue plaque. If anybody wants to come to this talk, donations are welcome. Um, and I would very welcome any, um, you know, any ch anyone in the chat wants to write to us. I think I've I've put my email yeah. um, in any ideas you have about um, supporting, you know, this kind of save the art. We are working a way to, to do that. I really think it's a good goal to, to sort of get this back. You can see the lunettes though, the lunettes exist because Basically, they're in the walls and you yes. can't steal them. And they're very, they're very <laughs> high up. And we, recent, <laughs> and we recently did a lovely children's book, yeah. which we've given to the local children for free. We've done online lessons for free about uh, the fantastic tales of St Pancras. So, yeah. and, um, someone has asked for the um, details of your website. Could you put your email oh, address in before? Yes, yeah, sorry. So uh, that would be helpful to have. And certainly it, it's been... Excellent that Steve, you've you've caused such a an interest in, in, in an area that many people may not have been aware of. Mm -hmm. I um, have been fortunate to have known it for many years, but um, the, the, these models of uh, statues of um, by the bays affected people in many ways. When I came to produce uh, my first book on Somerstown, The Streets of St. Pank uh, Somerstown, A Record of Change. I, the designer looked through a lot of the photographs and she saw the ones of St. Michael's with St. Michael's casting out those devils yes. on, the board, uh, uh, on the posts. And she said, that's been my nightmare as a child. As a child, she had gone to somebody's party in one of the flats and then afterwards left with her father and suddenly realised she'd forgotten to take the little goodies bag with her and rushed back into the courtyard to find her way and suddenly found herself under those devils peering down at her. And for the rest of her life, she had had that nightmare and actually seeing the pictures and what they were helped exercise it. Oh, I see. Um, Quite powerful. Lovely. That's a lovely story. <laughs> so thank you, Steve. I'm sure we, we, we've all thoroughly enjoyed it. And I, well, I'm sure we we will all look forward to the possibility of coming around with you on some walks in areas that many people may not be familiar with. Yes. Um, I've got a couple of points if I can break in. Yeah. Um, hi, yes. Uh, former students <coughs> at St. Martin's Art College, and I've really raised, I think, online the possible connection between St. Martin's and one of those um, images there, and maybe the art college, that two things as well. But one of the things is, uh, is as I suggested, maybe a talk being given at the art college, I'm sure they'd be very interested in it. The other thing is that a former tutor of mine who was at Holmes Road, part of the Kingsway College, uh, being just up the road and all this, 
um, left to, uh, to set up the art crime department at Scotland Yard. Mm -hmm. um, he gave up teaching art and went into, went into the police force to try and re <laughs> recover lost art objects. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering if th this sort of stuff, I, I gather these thefts and um, questionable sales of material, if they'd be drawn up to the relevant bodies within there. There's a unit there that looks into this sort of stuff. Just a suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I think there's um, a lot to interest us and in follow up. Certainly join the talk on Irene Barclay, the first woman uh, surveyor in the country who um, really was the master be mind behind a lot of the work of the Housing Association. And her and her team went around collecting the rents. They were known as the landladies in that area. Mm. But thank you all for joining the meeting and I look forward to seeing you at our next talk on the 22nd of April on Highgate Cemetery and its uh, plans for the future. Mm, so that. thank you very much for, uh, for attending everyone. Uh, um, thank, thank, you. You. thank you, Steve. Uh, uh, um, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. Yes. And, uh, oh, if anybody wants to contact me with the name of the Scotland mm. Yard, <laughs> I'll be very handy. I've put my email in the chat, by the way, everybody. Uh, yeah. So I'd definitely like to keep this going and uh, with Steve, of course. Thank you.